Okay, I haven't done one of these for a while, so um, it'll all go wrong. Um, this is the latest Democracy4 developer blog video. Um, I am the designer and programmer at Cliff. I've just realised I've got a little thing down the bottom here, uh, the, the bottom of the screen. I'm going to, if I can turn off that and that, and then I've got a little, can I turn off that and that? That was complicated, wasn't it? But there's a little thing down here um, in the game that will appear soon. And it's just a little icon that kind of says that there's DLC and it will be greyed out if you don't have it. And it will look like this if you do have it. Um, it yeah, it has a little tooltip saying that it's installed or not. Um, I, I just thought I should point out what that is. Um, and then I'll turn on all my other junk. Right, okay, cool. So um, we have an expansion pack coming out, expansion pack DLC. Everyone says DLC these days, um, but basically it's an optional extra thing that you can buy if you're interested in that part of the game. Um, and it's called Voting Systems. And it's basically about the process by which elections um, are kind of, election campaigns are kind of fought and won. Um, it, it, it's a, a bunch of stuff. If you played Democracy 3, you'll remember we had an electioneering expansion and that added a load of stuff like perceptions of the candidate and media spin events, stuff like that, manifestos. Um, all of that is in Democracy 4 anyway. All of the content from Democracy 3's expansions is all in Democracy 4 um, base game. But if you want to get more into that, um, we've done like a little expansion which I will um, I will talk you through so if I get a new game I'm just gonna go here to point out a new thing I say I'm gonna go to the UK point out a new thing so um, I've added this little chart here the economic cycle right um, this slide has always been here and people presumably have just gone don't know don't know what that does uh, let's just ignore it um, now basically, in Democracy 3, there used to be like a boom and bust cycle, which was a sine wave, right? So if you play Democracy 3, you kind of know what's coming. Um, you can get used to the economic cycle. Um, I should explain what the economic cycle is, actually. So the economic cycle is like boom and bust. It's something that the, um, is fairly reliable, but not massively um, over the long term in, in economics in that you get a huge boom period and then you get a recession and then you get a boom and then you get a recession. Um, it's not as as pronounced um, now maybe as it has been because we know about it, because economists know about this. Um, and a big part of um, Keynesian economics is to kind of fix that. So his thing was like the, the government should spend loads of money when um, when we're in a recession, in order to to stop it dipping too low, this is GDP by the way, um, to, to stop GDP um, dropping too badly. So basically, in a recession, you build bridges, you build roads, you build um, schools, you build hospitals, you do all this stuff to give everyone jobs uh, who who's, who have just lost their jobs, um, and then in the boom, you pay back the debt that is incurred um, because you did that. Uh, the trouble with Keynesian economics, and, and I make no judgment either way, um, but one of the problems is, is in a recession, Keynesian economics is really popular because people are like, yes, the government should spend money and give us all jobs. And then in the boom, um, they forget that bit. <laughs> and it's like, uh, the government should stay out of the way of the wonderful capitalism that is causing huge economic growth. Um, so anyway, um, because people do a little bit of um, Keynesian economics now and then, you don't get a nice sine wave, you get noise. So um, Democracy 4 simulates that. So we have two cycles. We have the sine wave cycle and we have a noise cycle that runs at a different, ampl uh, different wavelength. Um, so you get this sort of pattern. So anyway, when you start a new game now, you can say, I want to start in the middle of a boom, which will be here. I want to start at the bottom of a recession that will be there. So things will be getting better. Like if you're really cynical, right? You'd think I want to start um, suitably before a boom, so that the boom hits during the election year. Anyway, it's an option for you. You can fiddle with this now if you like. 
Um, that's got nothing to do with the DLC, it's just something that went in. Um, so now I'll talk about the DLC. Um, because I don't think I've got any other major stuff to talk about. <clears throat> so the DLC comes with a bunch of policies. Um, there's 11 in all. And some of them are pre-enabled for some countries. So I think that's one, the minimum voting age. Um, so what country are we? We're the UK. Wow, minimum voting age of 18. So we now have an option that you can like, you can set it as low as 13 or as high as 25. Uh, we don't we, we don't go beyond that because it would be kind of silly. I don't think any anyone sensibly wants to give 12 year olds the vote. <laughs> um, it would just be like, you know, the My Little Pony party would win or something. I don't know, that's probably vastly wrong. Um, and 25 is, is ridiculous. Um, but anyway, whatever. Everywhere in the game uh, currently has, has it set to 18, except I think South Korea has 19. Anyway, um, th there are loads of arguments over, over what you should do. Some people say that if you can like join the army and drive a car and, uh, and drink alcohol at a certain age, then um, that should be the age. Other people would say like 18 year olds have no idea how the world works. You have no real experience of life and um, you're easily swayed by social media. It should be at least 2021, 20, um, you know, whatever. You've paid hardly any tax. At this point in life, this is, this is um, a, a, a point that's made sometimes, um, especially in a country where you have state education, that the, basically your entire life has been subsidized by the state and then you get to vote. <laughs> um, it, it depends. Like I can see an argument that should be lower, especially because like, um, the, you know, people who are 16 now are going to have to live with the decisions other people make, especially with regards to climate change and stuff like that. Um, but I can also see the argument that actually everyone's an idiot when they're 18. Um, they just don't know it until they're like 25. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, you can change it. You can change it. And what that will do is it will affect the voter turnout of the young. This is a new thing. So, um, that is, is behind the scenes, but behind the scenes we have now have values in the DLC um, that determine whether or not young people show up to vote, whether or not ethnic minorities show up to vote, and whether or not um, retired people vote. And these can be affected by various things. So um, if I go here, there's an extra tab if you've got DLC voting. Woo! Extra tab. See, it's worth it just for this tab. Um, so anyway, this is all. I'll talk you through it. So uh, these are all the new policies, right? <clears throat> and um, we have a maximum voting age. Oh yes, um, which is very hard to implement because there is an argument, right? That if you're 93 and you're casting a vote, it's probably easily your last vote. You'll be probably be dead before there's another election. And yet you're making decisions that will affect all these other people. And also you may not be, you know, in full control of your faculties, as it were, at that age. So maybe we should cap the maximum voting age. Obviously, retired people would go ballistic at this. But in a sense, who cares? Because they can't vote. <laughs> um, and it's the, you know, it's the same with the minimum voting age. So, so by playing with these policies, you can reduce the number of people who can vote, which is to some extent evil, but another way understandable. So we've got other policies, compulsory voting, um, that is set um, in Australia, um, phone and internet voting. Um, see, that, that, that will boost turnout with young people. So you might think, well, why would I not do that? Of course I want compulsory voting. Of course I want phone and internet voting. I mean, that sounds perfectly reasonable. No, not necessarily tactically. If young people hate you because of your policies, the last thing you want to do is, is pass a policy that will enable them to vote easily. <laughs> and compulsory voting will mean all those um, you know young people who don't normally bother voting uh, will vote. Disaster. Um, so you may, in an evil way, decide um, that you want that. Um, state funding of parties is an interesting one. I'm going to load a save game in a minute that will show you how this works. Um, we have this in the UK, but it's not very much. Um, a lot of countries um, have it, and a lot of people don't know that their countries have it. 
Um, state funding of parties is very unpopular because it's the idea that your taxes go towards um, enabling politicians to lie to you. <laughs> but um, there is an argument that without a, a, um, state funding of parties, uh, the money comes from somewhere. It will come from big companies or rich people. Um, and arguably that's worse, right? Anyway, whatever. Election robocalls. So this is a thing we don't have in the UK. It's, it, it, it's um, well, I don't know. We don't have it, but we don't ban it. And when I say we don't have it, it's just like I've never got one. I, this kind of exists, but this idea that, that your phone goes and is recording message saying, vote for Boris Johnson. Um, I mean, a ridiculous idea, but anyway, whatever. Um, so a lot of this stuff works with like new mechanics. So party donation limits, okay. Um, so you can say that um, people can only donate a thousand dollars or a hundred dollars um, or whatever um, per year to a political party. Um, obviously, that really impacts the money you get from the wealthy. You then have to have a, a wide base of support. So if your plan was to win with the capitalist and wealthy vote and then just to steamroll the opposition um, by spending so much in the campaign that you, you persuaded people, um, then you don't want party donation limits, you don't want limits on corporate donors, obviously, you don't want limits on um, robocalls. Um, anyway, um, th this one down here is something that we we don't really do, but it's, it's basically the government having like a government information campaign, regardless who's in charge, saying you must vote, and it's basically to Im improve turnout. Um, we should have that, I think. Um, voter ID law, oh my God, the controversy. Um, I have an unpopular opinion on this, actually. Uh, well, no, I don't know. I mean, I've got nothing against voter ID, um, personally. I understand the, uh, the, there is a strong argument, like I, I wouldn't say that in Florida, um, or places that historically have like a history of like voter suppression. Um, and the impact of this is, is that ethnic minority turnout would be lower. Um, I mean, it's just a strategic decision, in, not in the game, but in the real world as to whether or not you think election tampering from foreign governments or, or just dishonest organisations is a bigger threat than um, people not having ID. Um, it depends. Um, just, I don't know. You need voter ID in loads of European countries, and the world doesn't end. But anyway, it's an option, and and, and like it's a controversial topic. And like um, anyway, it should be in the game, right? So anyway, these are a bunch of policies, and they affect how much money is raised and who from, and they affect turnout of different groups depending. And they also have other impacts, right? Like liberals don't like voter ID laws. Um, obviously, I think minorities don't like them um, if they're affecting their turnout, obviously. Um, and it's kind of bad for democracy because anything that makes it harder to vote is bad for democracy. Um, you know, I mean, that, that sort of goes without saying. So, um, so this is a bunch of policies. And this screen here, these policies exist in the world. They're just like any other policies, right? So if we go here, you can see a little icon in the corner there. Um, and that little icon is, that's a DLC policy, um, just so you know. Um, it's just, I thought it would be handy to have a little thing here to show you uh, easy access to, to, to policies about that. Why not, right? Um, and, and the green circled highlighted ones, they're ones that are currently um, enacted. So, so here we are in the UK, you can't have TV ads um, as part of your election campaign. It is illegal, you cannot do that. Um, we have party political broadcasts, which are always awful and um, each party gets a certain amount of them, whatever. Um, anyway, the other thing here is you have a binary choice, right? This is gonna be the controversial thing about this DLC. So we have two electoral systems, first past the post and proportional representation. And I'm going to explain them to you in case you don't know, because welcome to Politics 101 with Uncle Cliff. Um, so, because they're called different things in different countries and they've got loads of different flavors. There are no two countries on the planet who have the same system for voting because it, there's, there's so many possibilities, right? In the UK, we have what we call first past the post. 
Okay, so I don't vote for the Prime Minister. I don't vote for the party either. I vote for a local candidate in our local constituency, which will be about 100,000 people or something. Um, so the different parties or independents will put up a candidate in this constituency and we will all go out and we will cast votes and the one with the most votes wins. Um, it doesn't matter if they don't have um, a majority, they just have to have the most. Um, which is kind of uh, interesting. So that you get this whole problem of like splitting the vote, splitting the opposition. So um, you don't want two left-wing parties or two right-wing parties. You want to all come together and be the guy or the girl that wins. Anyway, that's not the problem. Um, the problem is, um, say, say in my local, say where I live, the Conservative Party wins, which they will, and they always will because of where I live. It has been Conservative since I think the 18 something or other, and it's been the same person forever. So my vote is pointless. Um, unless I, well, my vote is pointless anyway, because even if I vote a Conservative, uh, they're going to win anyway. It doesn't make any difference. Um, so we then get a single um, member of Parliament. Uh, to represent our, our 100,000 people in what we call a constituency. Okay, this is exactly the same as what happens in the United States, but there you do it by state. So arguably it's worse because you have 50 constituencies called states. Um, yeah, I know there's District of Columbia and I don't know, it's complicated, I know. But basically you've got 50 constituencies and they may have a varying number of electoral votes um, we have a more granular system. We have 650, I think, um, constituencies, which is nuts. Um, and, but it, it's basically the same thing. So uh, the, the members from each constituency or state, they all come together and they decide who's president or prime minister and which party has, has won, right? Which kind of sounds reasonable, but it isn't. It's a disaster. It's an absolute nightmare because there's no prize for coming second. So if where I live, 51% of people vote blue and 49% vote red, if that happens in every single constituency in the country, then we get 100% blue MPs and not a single red, which is nonsense, okay? Because clearly 49% of the population have zero representation. Um, now it kind of balances out um, and yeah, we get Labour governments, we get uh, coalitions here, we get Conservative governments and in the United States obviously you've got Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. So it does change, so it, it conveys the illusion of being fair, but it, but it isn't um, for so many reasons. So the alternate system, proportional representation, which happens in a lot of countries, a lot of European countries, most countries that we represent in the game have proportional representation. Proportional representation, um, coming second does matter. So basically um, you have a system, sometimes it's um, if, if a vote, um, if, if a vote would have been wasted, you kind of go with their second preference and stuff like that. Um, there are so many varieties of proportional representation. There's the additional member system. Um, there's the single transferable vote. Um, there's all kinds of runoffs. There's loads of different systems, right? But basically the goal of them is the same. The goal of them is that when you look at all of the votes that were cast in the country and the different parties that those votes were cast for, if you look at the members of the governing body, or, or not the governing body, but like the, um, the legislature, um, they will directly map, they will represent. So um, you will have, in, in, in my example given earlier, you would have 51 blue um, MPs and 49 red MPs. The blue party still wins in that situation, but there is still representation. So it's quite close, so you can kind of, um, it, it's tough to get legislation passed um, because it was a close result. Anyway, I know a lot of people who play the democracy games and very into politics. I totally understand the interest in first past the post, proportional representation, constituencies, states, um, all the different 
um, varieties of proportional representation. I totally understand that. I totally understand why people are interested in um, this is a this is a swing state or what we would call a marginal constituency, um, and that's what I want to focus my campaign on: the swing states. Blah 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 blah. Um, and we don't do that in this game, and I still don't do it. And I don't do it for a very deliberate design decision. It's not because I'm lazy. Um, it's because um, the game is deliberately designed not to do that. And the, the reason for that is, um, like, let's assume you're American, right? Let's assume you're American, you're watching this, and you're thinking, well, this is rubbish, Clef. Why do you not have all the different constituencies and states? This isn't voting systems. Okay, so if I say to you, California, how are they going to vote? Now, if you're American, you, you, you've got a pretty good impression, right? If I say California, is it a swing state? Or Iowa, is it a swing state? Um, how are they going to vote? In Mississippi, how are they going to vote? Now, if you're an American and you're really into politics, um, you kind of know, right? You, you've got a strong opinion. But now, if I say to you, okay, fine, um, what about Cornwall? What about Cardiff? How do people vote in Sussex? What about West Hampshire? How do people vote there? Or Wiltshire? Like, who knows, right? It's another country. So this is the problem. <laughs> like, in order to, to, to represent um, the full complexity of voting systems that are proportional representation versus first past the post, you would have to assume that the people playing the game know the local politics of every state in America and every constituency in Britain and as I said earlier we have 650 like Derbyshire West I have no idea and I live well I don't live in Derbyshire but I live in England um, it's ridiculous so we don't do that so we approximate it and we're approximating it by basically saying you get more turnout and especially more turnout for moderate parties for third parties if you pick proportional representation. So what that means is, if you change, I don't have the political capital right now, if I changed to this, that would be a boost to the middle party, that would be a boost to coalitions. And it might be that that's in my interest, because I know I'm probably gonna lose, but if I can uh, switch to a PR system and effectively boost turnout for the middle party, the moderate party, I may be the senior party in a coalition. So it could be a tactical decision to make to make that change, but but more relevantly, the reason it's in the game and, and in this this version of the game uh, with the DLC is because there is a difference in the in the way you get turnout, the way people vote. Um, if you have PR versus first past the post, or um, you know the American system, state system, whatever, um, electoral college system, you call it in America. Anyway, I know other countries exist, and I know all the country. If you're from one of the countries that has proportional representation, watching this, you're going like this. First past the post system sounds like ours, and it is. Anyway, right. So, uh, so that's kind of in the game, but there's other stuff, right? So uh, I'm just going to quit out. Uh, quit to main menu. This is like a politics lecture. What are you watching? Is it a video game blog? It's a lecture on voting systems. Um, well, I was playing game earlier, and oh my god, I'm doing badly. Um, I've added a new thing here, if you've got the DLC. It, in this case, it's not changing much, right? But this is what you normally get. This is the approval of my party, a little bit below par. I can turn on this distribution here. Uh, this is how people are going to vote. Oh my god, really bad. But the thing is, some people won't vote. We know that. So when we do opinion polls, um, Sometimes they'll say, we polled a thousand likely voters. So people who voted last time, who have strong opinions, uh, you know, you can kind of weed out people who aren't gonna vote. So now you can just look at likely voters. Now at the moment, they're quite similar. Um, one of the reasons being that I don't exclude that many people from voting through my evil policies. Um, but that may be different. Uh, and this is a new thing you get if you get DLC. Anyway, so something exciting is hopefully gonna happen. Um, here apart from my impending we have gridlock and this is I've kind of fixed it with some absolute like crazy crash measures let's see what happens yay fixed gridlock fixed right here's a new thing campaign focus so a year before the election this happens you get this pop-up you can't go to the next term without um, uh, sorting this 
So you now need to choose, this is the DLC, you now need to choose what you're going to focus on. So um, there are two uh, really famous examples of this. Um, there's Clinton's thing, which was said in private, I think. It wasn't an actual campaign slogan, but like, it's the economy, stupid. Um, in other words, yeah, you can make a lot of speeches about everything, but we win the election based on the economy. So focus on the economy. Um, and Tony Blair, who a lot of people have heard of, who used to be a UK Prime Minister, um, used to keep using this awful phrase, tough on crime, tough on the causes of crime. Um, some people would say he wasn't either. <laughs> but anyway, um, he, he keeps repeating it. And the, the basis of this is that most people don't care about politics. Most people really don't care. What does uh, Joe Biden stand for? I don't know. Who cares? I'm busy, you know, whatever. Um, so most people do not know the 10 top policy priorities or achievements of Joe Biden, okay? Or Trump or whoever. Um, so election strategists will try and pick something and go, this is what we're good at. Keep mentioning it. Okay, and you decide that early in the campaign. So we're talking a year out here. So there's all these things you can click on them. You can go, how am I doing on violent crime? Not that good. Wage is not particularly good. Health is awesome. This is the UK. I, I've just randomly gone through the game at this point. Health is pretty good. How's the economy? Well, you know, it's all right, but let's not get excited. So health is great. So I'm going to select health and go, Keep mentioning how great everyone's health is because of us. We'll take the credit for health. Okay, so this is so I've made that decision. This is a year out. Okay, so I've now made that decision. If we look at health down here in the corner next to my head, um, it's got uh, a, a little icon on it, meaning we're focusing on this. And it gets a new link to everyone up there. Um, and popularity is atrocious. Hopefully this will, this will fix it, it won't. Um, so if I click on that, you get a little tooltip explaining that, that we're focusing on this. And there's another little icon here on the link to everyone. So this is a new thing. Everyone is now aware of how health is going. If health is high, um, they can be happy because it's really rammed down their throat in, in every interview with every politician in my party. Have we mentioned how awesome health is? That doesn't fade out when I do that. I don't mind that actually, because it reminds you where it is. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll fix that. Should I fix that? Leave a comment below. Anyway, so this is a new thing. Okay. So um, I'm going to sign that agreement, um, whatever, um, because I just want to... Oh, no, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. Oh, Christ. <laughs> 1%? It's not looking good. Yes, yeah, so if we go here, um, fundraising, this has been fixed. Uh, it used to um, have a, a few formatting problems, um, which nobody noticed, but I did. Anyway, so look, we have state funding of political parties, how exciting. So um, the really dark there is state funding. It's the same for every party. Um, and the, this is donors and this is members. Now, um, the extent to which donations f from individuals, big uh, donors, um, factor in will depend on whether or not you've limited it. And in general, the amount um, that you raise will depend on whether or not you've limited donations from individuals. And also it will depend on corporate donations. If you ban corporate donations, then people who are capitalists, basically companies, um, will donate less because they'll be limited. So you can tweak these values through policy now a lot more than you ever could. And also the formatting of it is better. Um, so you can see that the, I, I've got no money <laughs> and we're gonna lose. Um, but it's not as bad as it could be because at least I've, I've leveled the playing field a little bit with some state funding of political parties. Um, in a mad dash, I could boost that, thinking we'll hopefully get something to run up to the election and it won't be so bad. It will, it will be bad. Um, I'm going to prevent a toxic waste dump. I mean, surely that would be popular. I have not paid much attention. Russian ships are approaching. It's a little bit too on the nose, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Like, we're, we're not doing well. We need to, we need to do something drastic. We need to fit... Everything's really bad. Obesity. Um, obesity. Let's put a massive tax on junk food. You know. Who would actually vote for a party because they fixed obesity three months before an election? <laughs> we can find out. Um, ruling out first strike. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to nuke Russia before they nuke us, are they? 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so um, last minute panic. I'm going to pledge to cut income tax and raise GDP. We know it's not going to happen because I won't get elected, so it's kind of fine. <laughs> um, oh my god, a massive, massive boost there. They've got they've got seven million members in the party. That's why. Okay, so um, so there's one other thing. I just want to show you one other thing. Oh no, two other things. Forgot about this. Yeah, so this is a new thing in the DLC. So um, yeah, it's election time. I am considered quite trustworthy. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Um, so do I run a negative campaign saying? the other party are all maniacs or do I run a party saying I'm lovely really um, this is risky but it will boost the effectiveness of your campaigning um, this is very safe but 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 it won't um, and it can backfire if it backfires it'll be bad and the extent to which it's risky and it might backfire is partly depending on how trustworthy you are I'm quite trustworthy I'm quite trustworthy, so I can risk a backlash. And also, I'm doomed in this election, so I might as well go full on negative. So I'm gonna... And it worked! <laughs> so I've only actually got 71 million pounds to spend in my campaign, um, but uh, it's gonna have the effect of 86 million because of my evil attack ads. Um, so that's good. Um, but we're still vastly outspent by the Citizens Alliance. So there's only one other thing I want to show you. So so down here, um, this is voters that are disenfranchised by the voting policies. Um, there'll always be some unless you you set the minimum voting age to 13. So 13 to 18 year olds in my country do not get the vote. So they're disenfranchised. And, and um, there's a little like icon there to show you what policies were affecting that now. Because uh, there could be several. Um, so, um, oh my, oh my god, who thought the popular democrats were going to win? My money was on the Citizens Alliance. My money was not on me. Didn't have much money. Um, that's brutal. <laughs> Never let me run your country. Um, yeah, pretty bad, huh? Um, I had no activists and, and, um, yeah, the spending, the spending, uh, didn't swing it in the end. Uh, even these voters. How many votes did I get? 700. I only got 776,000 votes. Yeah, I denied the vote to 3.3 million people. <laughs> Classic. Anyway, um, this has been the longest video I've ever done, but it's like um, voting systems are interesting, I think. This is an expansion pack. It's called Voting Systems. Um, it's coming out really soon, Tuesday, I think, uh, assuming nothing goes wrong. And um, you don't have to get it, but it, but like if you like the, the kind of extra stuff that adds to the game, um, then get it. It doesn't make any difference to, to the base game if you if you don't have it. Um, you know, nothing's just, nothing, you know, the game will play exactly as it used to. It's just if you want these extra features, you can buy this new thing. Anyway, let me know what you think, right? Because like just because it's DLC doesn't mean we can't update it and improve it and edit it. Maybe you think um, part of this was really confusing. Maybe you think um, part of it just sucks. Um, I'm sure you'll let me know. Anyway, uh, let me know. I should do more videos because I should. Um, uh, yeah, because I should. Um, anyway, um, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Blah blah. Vote for me, <laughs> please.